Can you guys hear us? Um, did you get anything? <laughs> Oh, wait, yeah, I think it's, okay, cool. Uh, perfect, so I guess I'll start over the introduction again. So, hey everybody, um, I'm Chibi, and this is my co-panelist, Solid. Um, this is our panel, the Portal Taku's Guide to Going to Japan. Um, was so good to see that there's, wow, eight people. Um, there's, there's actually people in the chat. <laughs> um, yeah, um, so as thank you for joining us, even though it's pretty late on the East Coast. And um, if you guys didn't know, we, um, Solid and I are doing this, uh, doing this panel as a part of a con in Alaska. So that's why it's a little tech icon. And we want to thank them for giving us an opportunity to present, to present our panel. So, yeah. Okay, so as I mentioned, I'm Chibi. Um, the joke is I'm a professional heavy lifter of things. I'm pretty much at the gym all the time. If you also know me, I'm an aspiring web developer, software engineer, all that. I co-founded the Onu Crew, Ono Crew, which is like an inside joke between me and my friends. And if you've also played the Yakuza games, you might know Ono, Ono Michio, that stuff. I also attend way too many cons. So I've been to Japan twice, once during Golden Week and another time in November, December. Um, both were in Tokyo. If you want to see some sh some random anime shenanigans, you can follow me on my Instagram. So yeah. Greg, 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 we have a problem. Oh, solid. Um, apparently your mic isn't working. All right, can they hear me now? Uh, try speaking again. Uh, I am speaking. Hopefully I am audible. If not, uh, someone let me know. Um, I think I think you're good to go. Just say something quick. Okay, uh, there. Words? Tokyo, Tokyo Acid says yes. <laughs> Perfect, all right. Sorry about that. So as I was saying, I'm a convention panelist, uh, software engineer. Sometimes I take photos. Uh, if anyone wants to know more about that, just drop me a comment later on. Uh, I'm also the bringer of bread, which is one of my many titles at Anime Next, uh, which is a convention at, in Atlantic City, New Jersey. So if you ever find yourself on this side of the planet, do check it out. Um, I've been to Japan three times, uh, the last time in February, and I came back, then I got the flu, and 
now everyone's in quarantine, so I don't really know what's happening. Um, if you want to see lots of political opinions and lots of random anime shit posting, you can definitely follow me on Twitter. <laughs> um, cool. So let's uh, proceed. Okay, so before we start, we have a little disclaimer. Um, everything here is based on mine and Solid's opinion. It doesn't reflect an official policy or any party, not limited to travel agent, blah, 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 and stuff. And nobody was harmed in this in the production of this <clears> except, <throat> for, <laughs> except for one of your presenters. Yeah. <laughs> All right, moving along. <laughs> Uh, so we're going to cover, you know, like the basics of Japan travel. Uh, and then towards the end, we'll have time for questions. But if you have any questions, also feel free to stop us and just yell out or whatever. Feel free to drop it in the chat. We'll, um, we'll be sure to answer it. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's dive right into it to make up for some lost time. Uh, let's talk about exchange rates real quick. For some weird reason, they don't take American dollars in Japan. Not sure what that's about. <laughs> it's almost like they're another country. <laughs> uh, so the solution to that is to turn your dollars into yen. And you can do that at a bunch of places. Uh, you can do it at the bank. Uh, you can do it at the airport when you leave America. You can do it at the airport when you arrive in Japan. Uh, you can also do it at foreign ATMs. Uh, the thing to keep in mind is that the exchange rate is kind of a function of markets, and so it's constantly changing. So you want to be cognizant of what that exchange rate is. Um, as you can see, it kind of bounces up and down depending on world events. Kind of similar to uh, stocks. But mm -hmm. today's exchange rate is actually very favorable. Uh, one dollar will get you 109.563 Japanese yen. What that means is, uh, yeah, what uh, that compared means to normal, uh, you're getting more money for your single dollar than you do on average. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for reference, the last two times I act actually went, the exchange rate the first time I went was actually 110, um, 110 Japanese yen to $1. And the most recent time back in November, the most the exchange rate was, I believe, 108 to $1. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds about right. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Yeah. Something you should probably know if when, when you do eventually get to Japan, Cash is king. Um, in in Japan, in general, they believe if you don't have the cash, you can't really afford. If you don't have the cash on hand, you can't really afford it. They. It's not to say that they look down on credit cards, but like, it just means like if you don't have it in cash, you really shouldn't buy it and put yourself in debt. <laughs> but it do, it doesn't mean you can't use credit cards though. Um, for some last time I went, for some reason. Um, for some reason, Discover was the popular one and Visa was accepted in limited places. So yeah. Also, coins are very popular. <laughs> uh, your mileage may vary when spending money, though. Uh, cash is accepted literally everywhere. Uh, it is not unusual to buy a stick of gum with a, a 10,000 yen note, and everyone's just fine giving you change for that. So don't feel too bad. Uh, do keep in mind that you will wind up with tons of coins. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a little hard to spend them, especially if you're used to, you know, spending money like you do here in the States. Because we just put everything on our cards and try not to think about change. Um, on the topic of cards, though, uh, they're accepted in... Their acceptance varies depending on where you go. Uh, you have to be aware of foreign transaction fees if your cards have any. Uh, I travel with cards that don't have any foreign transaction fees, so I'm good. Mm -hmm. And also, every transaction you make settles in a kind of indeterminate amount of time. 
which affects the exchange rate the transaction is charged at. So uh, that's something to keep in mind as well. Uh, there is another form of payment you can use in Japan, though, that's pretty cool. And those are uh, stored value cards. Um, they're like your Suica cards. Um, they're accepted in a lot of places. Uh, in all of the stores in the train station complexes, uh, they're accepted for the trains themselves. Um, they're accepted on buses. They're accepted in convenience stores and at some vending machines. Uh, they're super convenient. Uh, there are apps that you can use to keep track of your spending. And most importantly, you can add it directly to your Apple Pay or Google Wallet. That way uh, you can use your phone in place of the card. They're living in the future over there, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, so there are a couple of costs that you need to consider before you eventually, before you eventually go on vacation and stuff. So, transportation, lodging, food, souvenir, and activities. Um, Solid can give you a little breakdown on this little chart here. So in, uh, on my most recent trip, uh, I kind of ate all of my budget. <laughs> uh, I wound up spending mostly on food, which is very unusual for me, but I had to try some uh, interesting things. So it was definitely worth the cost. But normally your most expensive uh, item is uh, transportation. That's the plane tickets to get there, the trains you use to get around, um, those kinds of things. Um, and then depending on what you actually want to do, like activities and entertainment and tourism, that can also wind up being a very significant chunk of your costs. So when you're planning out your trip and considering your budget, keep all those things in mind. Okay. And this is the breakdown for my most recent trip. Um, transportation did take up most of the chart, but I did include my plane ticket. Next would be, of course, finding a place to stay, followed by me buying everything in sight and buying souvenirs for everyone, and then food. And I didn't really do that many activities slash shenanigans. I mostly just explored so that I didn't really spend that much money on it. So yeah. All right. So there's basically only one way to get to Japan from the United States. Well, unless you're Goku, that is. You're going to have to fly. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, we're based here on the East Coast, so we're used to uh, just being able to fly out of one of the largest hubs in the country. And prices are, you know, pretty, still pretty steep most of the time, but you can get some nice deals. Uh, the thing about that is, in Alaska, the landscape's a little bit different. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you want to fly directly, you basically have to charter a private jet. There are no direct flights from the entirety of Alaska to anywhere in Japan. <laughs> uh, but if you're willing to put up a layover, um, then you can definitely get to Japan. <laughs> Um, the best places to have a layover are on the West Coast. So that's um, your Portland, your Seattle's, uh, your San Francisco's, and your Los Angeles. Um, because from there, you can just leave through one of the international hubs directly to Japan. Um, you may be interested in taking a look at flights from Singapore Airlines and Hawaiian Airlines because uh, they have some interesting and inexpensive routes to Japan. Uh, anything under $850 is a good deal right now, but predicting the pricing is difficult because we don't know what the current COVID pandemic is doing with uh, the entire airline industry. So it seems like it's very discouraging to see that the best flights are really expensive but there are several websites that you can use personally i personally i can recommend secret flying and travel pirates they will often post deals that usually last 20 that you usually will last 24 to 48 hours before they're not valid anymore and um 
And another way to reduce the price, this applies if you're coming from the East Coast. And even if you're coming from Alaska, you can go to like another country and make it a multi-city trip. It'll reduce the cost by like maybe $200, $300, at least from my personal experience, that's what happened to me. So yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, this doesn't exactly apply to Alaska, unfortunately, but for the rest of the United States, <laughs> excluding Hawaii as well. Uh, the cheapest airfare is typically through Air China. <laughs> and the other companies that are owned by the Chinese government, so that's China Southern and China Eastern. Um, in another life, <laughs> terrible things happened to me. Uh, I was on assignment as a photographer on a cursed project, <laughs> and... Uh, Maybe I wound up being almost detained by the Chinese government. I definitely wound up stranded for a full day as well. Um, would not recommend. I mean, sure, my flight was less than $400. But the cost to my mental and emotional well-being <laughs> is definitely something I would reconsider. Anyway, enough about that. Mm -hmm. You've probably heard the articles going around um, that Japan is planning to uh, pay people to visit to drum up tourism as a result of the pandemic. Unfortunately, Unfortunately. that is not true in the slightest. <laughs> so uh, get to saving for those plane tickets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so... Um... Getting around Japan, your best way, the best way to get around is by train. And for the record, Kuroko no Basuke was very accurate in portraying how the trains are, especially in Shinjuku Station. <laughs> so trains are um, everywhere in Japan. They're like the most reliable form of transportation I've ever seen in anywhere I've ever been. Um, and they will probably be your primary mode of transportation as well. Um, mm -hmm. uh, an interesting thing about Japan is that the train lines are mostly privately owned. And um, as a result, there's actually like competition amongst them. And somehow that's actually brought out the best performance in them. Which is kind of goes against market trends, but whatever. Um, but when you're in Japan, uh, we recommend that if you're going to be there for a week or longer, that you purchase a, what's called a JR pass. Uh, it's a pass that's valid on all of uh, JR's operated lines. That includes the bullet trains, uh, excluding the fastest bullet train, which is called the Nozomi. And um, basically gives you unlimited access. If you consider the fact that a bullet train ticket is like the cost of an Amtrak ticket here, um, that's hundreds of dollars you could be saving. If you take the bullet train even one and a half times, you've already made up the entire cost of your JR pass. But of course, if you're only going to be staying in one area in Japan, such as if you're only in Tokyo, um, train fare can and will add up. So another trick that I use, um, that I use, that I recommend that you can probably use would be to buy um, the daily passes. They sell them for like, they, they're valid for 24, 48 and 72 hours. And especially if you're going to be hopping around all over the place, like in one day, I would go from like um, Ikebukuro to like Akiba to Shibuya. I went all over the place. You'll get your money's worth and you won't really have to worry about spending that much. Also, trains shut down at midnight. So you can get lit, have fun, but after midnight, trains are um, trains won't be running and the only thing that will be left will be taxis and taxis are very, very, very expensive. Very expensive. So remember, if you're out partying and you miss the last train, just stay out partying until the first train, which is like four or something, 5 a.m. in the morning. Yeah, I think it's around 5 a.m. It's like just before 5 a.m.
Now, the next biggest thing to think about is where you're going to stay in Japan. Uh, you can't just lobby con the entire country. <laughs> so you do need a place to stay. And they will ask you where you're staying when you enter the country uh, mm -hmm. at your port of entry. So uh, there's different types of lodging and accommodations. Uh, there's obviously hotels, and those come in a variety of flavors, like business hotels and uh, luxury hotels, like all the major chains, luxury chains that you know of are there, the Ritz-Carlton, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there's uh, tradi traditional Japanese inns. Um, those are the places that you see in anime that typically have, you know, like a hot spring, but they also serve you like a nice fancy multi-course meal in the evening. Mm -hmm. um, they're Airbnbs, which are illegal in a lot of parts of the country. Mm -hmm. So you have to be careful when booking those. Uh, there are hostels, which unlike their European counterparts, aren't really horror movie murder type places, but just really chill, cheap places to sleep. Uh, of course, uh, your rooms will be small and you'll have to share space either with your roommates if you have enough people to rent a private room or with random strangers. But that can be fun too, I guess. <laughs> and <laughs> capsule hotels, which are kind of cool, kind of cheap, not very comfortable, but definitely an interesting novelty. I would want to do that at some point. <laughs> <clears throat> so when it comes to like booking look um location is key when looking for accommodations like kind of like if you were to go over to new york and if you're trying to decide between staying in actual manhattan and stay or staying in brooklyn it's going to be cheaper in brooklyn so like if we're going to take that with japan like, if you're going to stay in Shinjuku, you're going to be paying a lot more money than if you're going to be staying in Asakusa. And as we mentioned, Airbnb can be a decent budget choice, but it is still illegal. When you do book, you do have to make sure that they have this um, registration this number. number on the top. And yeah, it's a decent budget choice, but they do have a tendency to tack on a lot of extra fees, like the cleaning fee and a whole bunch of other fees that I can't remember from the top of my head right now. And also, sometimes what you see in the picture isn't what you're going to get. They can be, the rooms can be kind of small. Yeah, yeah uh, on my last trip, I stayed in a bunch of Airbnbs and they were all deceptively small. <laughs> um, in fact, one of them looked like it was a nice regular size apartment and it turns out that if I laid down on the floor, I could be in all of the rooms of the unit at the same time. And I'm <laughs> only, you know, like 5'11", so that's kind of terrifying. <laughs> Yikes. But that's still pretty tall, so... <laughs> Um, but yeah, so be careful of Airbnbs. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, one of our favorite topics, food. <laughs> food. Okay. But you would think that like food would be pretty expensive, but with every, with every tourist location in every, every country, there are a lot of choices. Um, you may have heard the legends of 7-Eleven and Family Mart and Lawson's, the Kunbinis. The, um, unlike here in the States with 7-Elevens and all that stuff, over in Japan, they sell some pretty good quality stuff at very, very good prices. And if, like, take, for example, the more expensive stuff like Wagyu, um, you can get Wagyu on a stick for, like, 1,000 yen, and it's actually a good amount too or if you want you want to try expensive sushi like fatty tuna which can be pretty expensive by itself you can get a whole plate of it for like about i think it was 2500 to like 3k yen it's not that bad and i think solid could probably tell you more about like his food adventures too oh yes <laughs> <clears throat> food is like my favorite topic because it's the most delicious um <laughs> So 
convenience store food is actually really cheap and surprisingly nutritious, despite <laughs> the fact that it's from a convenience store. Um, you don't actually have to eat instant ramen every day to get by. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, there's high-end and upscale cuisine as well. Um, I tried uh, fugu last time I was there, which is uh, the uh, puffer fish. It's a little expensive. It's like, I think it was like 25-ish a person. No, I think it was a little more than that. I think it was like 30 a person, but definitely worth it. Interesting experience. Um, but yeah, cuisine runs the full gamut of here's like 100 yen street food or here is, you know, a $400 sit down omakase with like the world's greatest sushi chef. You definitely have a large variety of options. Um, if I remember correctly, there's a chain called uh, Genki Sushi, which is a conveyor belt sushi place. If you are in Tokyo, you should definitely check it out because it's both cheap and very delicious. <laughs> I need to take note of that for my next trip. <laughs> so yeah, like if you're also not if you're not into anime and all that stuff, like and we're presenting this for like anime con and stuff there are other things you can do that don't have to do with anime nerdy things and stuff for cheap like with like every tourist destination a lot of, some sites can be super expensive but there are also alternatives like and like tokyo sky tree you may have seen it like in persona or in pictures of when your friends have gone to japan instead of doing that it's actually super expensive you could go to like the observation deck in tokyo at in Shinjuku in the Tokyo Metropolitan Government Building. You'll get a great, the view over there is actually a lot better from what I heard. Also, if you want to take in the culture, there's a lot of temples and monuments and fun thing, and temples and monuments to take in the good, the culture. And if you also want to hate yourself, if you're in Japan during like, I think July, July and August, you could climb Mount Fuji. Solid could tell you more about that. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I hated myself after I climbed Mount Fuji. Of course, uh, I made the mistake of climbing it, you know, in the middle of a hurricane. So, uh, check your weather before and after and during. Um, pack accordingly if you're going to do that. Um, yeah. Also, I yeah. learned that day that I don't like low oxygen environments. Who knew that humans need oxygen to breathe? That's kind of crazy. And, <laughs> yeah, and outside of that, um, there's also flea markets where you can go bargain hunting and find rare stuff. Shout out to Tokyo Acid for letting us know about that. <laughs> um, on the topic of Skytree, uh, depending where you're staying, uh, you may, uh, if you make your booking through certain websites, they may just send you uh coupon codes to get a discount on uh, Skytree admission. Uh, some things to keep in mind with that is that um, there are, there's like the express line, which you pay a lot for, and then there's the regular line, which you wait a lot for and still pay a bunch for. So um, plan ahead. <laughs> Don't just show up <laughs> not knowing what's going to happen. <laughs> That kind of sounds like what would happen if you tried to go up the Empire State Building or World Trade Center. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay. Um, there are definitely other non-weeby things to do besides... Uh, uh, for example, you can go to Nara. You can see the deer park. Um, there's other animal-based attractions in Japan. They kind of have a lot of them and are well-known for them. Uh, there's yeah. the island with the bunnies, there's the island with the foxes, there's the island with the cats. <laughs> well, the well, well there's, an island, there's an island of the foxes. <laughs> there is. I kind of want to go, but I heard it's like super out of the way. <laughs> and there's an island of the cats? <laughs> yeah, there's actually a documentary about it on uh, Amazon Prime, if anybody actually uses that thing. 
Ooh, I'm gonna have to take a look at that then. But anyway, Island of the Bunnies, I know about that. I actually <laughs> went, it was uh, pretty cool. <laughs> Wait, the Bunny Island? Yeah. Was it fluffy? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> the bunnies are only interested in the food you have for them. <laughs> they don't care if you're there. But uh, there are, <clears throat> there is a, the relic, or rather the ruins of a World War II chemical weapons factory on the same island. Oh, which is we... interesting. Uh, I would definitely take a look at that if you happen to go for the bunnies as well. We got a question on the chat. Oh, what's up? Is there an island of dogs? <laughs> uh, not to my knowledge. But if anyone <laughs> finds one, drop it Please in the chat and I'll book my flight right now. <laughs> yeah. Did you end up seeing deer mate the last time you ended up when you were over at Nara? Uh, I went during deer mating season and the deer were as aggressive as they warned, but uh, I did not see any deer mating. I consider myself <laughs> lucky, I think. I don't know if I want to live through a National Geographic special. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, so here's the moment I know a lot of people have been waiting for. We're going to talk about <clears throat> buying weed goods. <laughs> Yes. So when you're in, um, when it comes to, when it comes to anything anime related, there are two, two places that come to mind, Akihabara and Ikebukuro. Um, there are a lot of stores there that sell a whole bunch of different anime goods and depend, um, and the prices vary depending on which store you go to, but there are a couple of things that don't change. If, if what you're looking for is from a shonen, so if you're looking for something from My Hero Academia, and and if the merch is from a mainstream and popular anime or very old and popular, going back, My Hero Academia, and if the, the merchandise you're looking for is of the protagonist or another really popular character, you're going to be spending quite a bit of money. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> like, um, like, some examples of this would be if you want, if you're really into figures, there's a Deku figure you want, you're really into, and all that stuff. And then there's also a figure of, um, I forgot his name in my hero, but he's the really annoying guy with like the- where, Oh, where, Mineta? Yeah, and the there's a The kid who's Mineta literally figure. trash. <laughs> yeah, he's trash. But anyway, Deku is going to cost more expensive. And if you're, and, example of this if you if you really like jojo's depending on which one it's going to be pretty expensive <laughs> um another thing about shopping for you know anime goods is that market cycles move very very quickly in japan it's mm -hmm. not like here where it's like oh uh look at all this great merch from this show i liked five years ago is available at cons no it's whatever's airing right now and whatever is like perennially popular. And that's kind of it. If you're looking for older stuff, you're gonna have to go hunting for it. And there are places for that. Yeah, take for example, like last February when Solid was in Japan, um, Ryuga Gotoku 7, the Yakuza game, just came out in Japan and I really wanted some merch. You would think like maybe three weeks after it came out, came out, there would still be like merch. There wasn't any, and I was very sad. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's okay. It's so You back food at least. <laughs> That's true, I still haven't given it to you by the way. I will, uh, at this point, I'm gonna have to like FedEx it to you before it expires. <laughs> yeah, I was actually about to ask about that, but we'll talk about that after this. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. All right, so uh, if you're going shopping, uh, all the popular places in Tokyo are the ones you can name off the top of your head. If you're looking for older things, uh, you might want to try uh, Nakano Broadway. Um, you want you might want to uh, hit up uh, this chain of stores called uh, Mandarake. Um, they have, I know in Akiba, they have a huge complex. It's like seven floors, and each floor is a different specialty. They have retro video games, they have doujins, they've got uh, anime figures, both old ones and new ones. Um, 
what else? If you are in Osaka, for example, um, you might want to check out Nihonbashi. Um, if you are in Nagoya, you would want to go to uh, Osu. Um, yeah, there are a lot of places to buy a lot of weeb goods. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. But why shop in person, though, when you can shop online? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so again, another shout out to Tokyo Acid on the chat for actually telling us about this advice. You can actually pre-order goods from certain stores online and pick them up at your local company when you get there. You could try it with the Amazon site. Um, you could try it with Amazon and be sure you have like your passcode and not, wait. Make sure you have your pass passport, passport. <laughs> <laughs> and the Score confirmation the barcode, barcode that you get when you complete yeah. your order. It's kind of like an Amazon locker, but instead of, you know, being in like the basement of a Staples or in uh, a gas station or in a <laughs> flower shop, it's in a convenience <laughs> store. And, you know, a person will hand you a package. Not suspicious at all, I swear. <laughs> Legit. Um, all right, so we kind of flew through that real quickly, um, partially because of the panic from the streaming trouble earlier, uh, and partially because we wanted to give everyone time to, you know, ask questions in the chat. Um, mm -hmm. So let's have at it if we have any questions. If not, we'll just talk about more in-depth stuff. Yeah. Any questions? Um... It's like we got oh I see uh, someone was interested in Bunny Island uh, yeah I, if I remember the name of the island is Okonoshima and it is also a nature park like a uh, kind of like the equivalent of our uh, national parks um, cool do we have any questions at all oh god <laughs> no okay no? we got um, we have a question um, this is definitely directed towards you. Why did you almost get detained? Ah, <laughs> uh, ah, uh, about that. <laughs> you see, um, because the project I was on was cursed and grossly mismanaged, um, we had to get the literal cheapest tickets possible. And when you buy the literal cheapest tickets available, we're talking about sub $400 tickets to Japan here. Uh, there's usually some concessions you have to make, aside from, you know, being treated as luggage. <laughs> um, and that is having two or three layovers. Uh, and in my case, uh, I was actually on a business trip the day before, and I teleported back to New York City from my business trip to get directly on a plane to land in Beijing for a 14 hour layover before I would continue on to, um, what's the name of that city? Uh, Dalian? Oh yeah. Anyway. Um, Beijing the and thing then about that other Beijing's, city, right? What was that? It, um, it was Beijing and then you went to some other city before actually getting to Japan, right? Yes, Dalian. Okay. Anyway, uh, during my 14-hour layover, uh, I had forgotten the advice my friend gave me, which is to never leave the airport. And the reason for that is air traffic control in Beijing does whatever they want because they don't have anyone to answer to except the government, and they're run by the government. Um, so they're prone to just moving flights around. So they move my flight up. So when I got to my gate, you know, early the following morning, uh, my plane had already left and there was no corresponding flight for me to catch that day. I had to wait a full 24 hours. Uh, in those 24 hours, my visa expired and nobody remembered this. When they rebooked me for the next flight. So at some point, uh, I'm wandering around Beijing saying, okay, it's time for me to go to the place I'll be staying tonight. And I couldn't check in anymore. 
Uh, and the reason for that was the expired visa. And that led to some serious issues. Um, so I had to go back to the airport. And at the point where my visa was expired, they kind of started treating me like a criminal. It was not fun. Anyway, the following morning, I, I finally get onto the plane and I land in Dalian. And when I hand my passport to the uh, military people there, because um, all of the uh, immigration officers in the interior of the country are apparently military dudes, uh, he kind of freaked out trying to figure out the weird mismatch of timestamps on all the visas in my passport. And that's when they almost detained me. Zero yeah. out of ten would not recommend. <laughs> yeah, that's another thing we forgot to mention. Um, we should have mentioned earlier. If you do decide to like take one of the cheaper, like the cheaper ones, like going by Air China, China Southern, China Eastern, you may have to deal with like, of course, the lay um, with like the layovers and all that's the layovers being like twenty four hours long and and like um, I guess the people in the in the airport airports like. Basically what, what Saul was saying, <laughs> except not that bad. <laughs> Remember, tra traveling through China can be complicated. You need a visa to leave the airport at all. Mm -hmm. If you're an American citizen, um, it's almost like, you know, there's some beef between our two countries right now. I wonder why. I also <laughs> wonder why. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, if you can avoid flying through China, I would recommend mm -hmm. it. <laughs> yeah, like general, um, like the flight, um, the more expensive direct flights or the one one stop flights may be a little bit more expensive, but but like I mentioned, some of the layovers in China can be like over twenty four hours, and when you're traveling from the East Coast to Asia, you do lose a day, so like. If your layover is 24 hours, that's an extra day traveling. And then if you're only going to be in Japan for a week, you're only going to be there for like five days or so. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, I see this comment about Alaska being frustrating to travel from. Uh, the one good thing about traveling from Alaska is that if you're going to Japan, you can actually make your layover be in Hawaii, which allows mm -hmm. you to put together two of the most exciting vacations possible. Oh, yeah. Of course, I'm just a fan of sand and volcanoes, so <laughs> that might be me. I just randomly thought of the Star Wars quote where it's like, I don't like sand, it's coarse, and it gets Oh, work. my God. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Huh, I didn't know that it was like... <laughs> one of the worst ones to travel from. But anyway, if you have any more questions, feel free to drop them in. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> We've got tons of questions happening right now. Uh, all right, so I guess we can uh, talk about random things in Japan while we uh, hope for some questions to pop up. Why don't you yeah. tell us your favorite place that you visited? My favorite place, I've only been to like Tokyo, but like definitely going to Akiba is one of my, was definitely one of my highlights the last few trips. Where um, in Akiba did you like the most though? I mean, you know me, I love playing room games. Oh, that's legit. Oh yeah, another thing we forgot to mention. Oh. Are, if you're definitely into arcades, video games, and all that stuff, and crane machines, it can get very dangerous on your wallet. <laughs> On the topic of crane games, uh, a lot of the arcade games also take um, uh, IC cards as well. So mm -hmm. that's super dangerous. Be very careful to not just spend your entire life savings when you go there. Especially if you're using your IC card. Well, you should be using your IC card to pay for the train, but like you could use it to pay for crane for crane games and believe me when I say your money will go very very quickly if agreed you <laughs> I spent over $20 trying to win a plushie 
uh, when I was there a couple of months ago, or I guess a few months ago now, uh, one of the people I was traveling with definitely had a crane game addiction. Um, I suspect he spent a triple digit amount on crane games, but he also won a lot of things, so it may have been worth it. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> But yeah, I just remember spending a whole lot of money the first time I went on crane on crane machines, and also playing lots of DDR. That's legit. Yeah. What about you? You could tell us about your Sapporo trip. Oh, yeah. Uh, I went to Sapporo in February for the uh, snow festival. Believe it or not, it is like the second snowiest city in the world, and they're not joking. <laughs> There is lots and lots of snow. <laughs> Very cold. A uh, lot of fun, though. Um, they've got good ramen. They've got good beer. Um, the snow sculptures were actually really interesting because they come with like light shows and uh, performances. And, of course, festival food, which I'm always all about. <laughs> festival food. But, yeah. Um, what other fun? Oh yeah, if you're also really into if you if you're also like a party animal and just want to go drinking, from what I know, Golden Guy isn't that. Um, Golden Guy in Shinjuku is not that expensive, right? Um, it depends where you go because some places have like a sitting fee, uh, and then other places, uh, a lot of places, most places don't have like you know beer on tap. They serve it in bottles, but they serve in like the big bottles that you're meant to share with people. Um, yeah. But yeah. Um, do y'all have any more questions? Thoughts, concerns, questions? Feedback? Right. <laughs> what if we have a question for them? Sure. What's your question for them? Uh, let me think about that. <laughs> uh, how many of you are planning to go to Japan as soon as we're all out of quarantine? <laughs> oh, we, we actually have a question from someone. It says, when do you guys plan to go to Japan? Um, as soon as it's legal for me to go back. <laughs> oh, yeah. Americans are currently still kind of yeah. banned for being a disease vector at the moment. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, we're still, um, yeah, from what I know, we're still banned along with, like, a bunch of other countries. Um, ideally for me, I do want to go back next year, assuming the world is no longer on fire. Legit, um, legit. Hope, I'm hoping, hoping to eventually go to Okinawa. Oh, I've never been there. I want to go. I also want to spend more time in Western Japan. I only spent like a good 20 minutes in Kumamoto and like a half a day in Fukuoka. So I'd like to correct that next time. Yeah, I still have to make it out to Osaka and everything. But yeah. We can go eating and drinking if we go to Osaka. Oh, God. It'll be fun. I could finally try fugu. That's true. It tastes tingly. That, po that poison, though. <laughs> it's fine. The neurotoxin oh. is friendly. Oh, we have another question. Will you guys buy the prefectural mascots next time? Oh, though? I actually have one. Hold on. Let me go get it. Nice green screen. <laughs> Here we go. I got him. <laughs> oh, I actually didn't know about that. I'll definitely... I'll definitely look into that the next time I go. Which one is that? This is uh, Kumamon. The uh, Kumamoto bear that is always getting himself into trouble. Oh, so cute. But yeah. Um, so yeah. You have any other questions you want to throw out there? Um, while they come up with questions, uh, I'd like to add that getting around is not too bad, even if you don't 
read any Japanese because all the signs are like written in kanji and romanji and English. <laughs> yep. It's At least the, all the directional uh, signs are. <laughs> yeah. But it is helpful if you actually, you know, know a few words so that you can uh, mm -hmm. interact with people, have an easier time ordering food and buying things. Okay, we got another question on the chat. It's, would you visit the mascot featured on last week tonight? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> Chi John is one of the best mascots of all time. All time. <laughs> I feel like I need to know the context of this. Oh, I have a video for you after this then. <laughs> okay, cool. But yeah. Like, um, going back on the topic of what Solid was saying, like, it's not that hard to get around. Like, my first, the first time I went, I used my very, very limited Japanese knowledge, and I got around with, excuse me and thank you. <laughs> but the second time I went, I can, um, my ability to read hiragana and katakana was a little bit better, and my, and the phrases I knew were a little bit better. So, Yeah. <laughs> That's my personal experience. All right. Yeah. Um, we have mm -hmm. just a few more minutes left. Mm -hmm. Don't all, uh, you know, <laughs> jump in at once. <laughs> yeah. You can ask us anything. <laughs> well, not anything, anything, but whatever. <laughs> You can ask us anything, but we're not obligated to actually answer. <laughs> oh, okay. We have another question. How much cash would you suggest having on hand for food a day, actually? Uh, um, it depends what you want to eat. <laughs> like, yeah. you could easily get away with, you know, doing $30 a day if you want to live on convenience store food. Uh but you can also, you know, easily blow that budget if you want to go to, like, a really fancy restaurant in Ginza, for example. Mm -hmm. um, as for me, I, I spend, you know, I usually go for about two weeks when I do go. And when I do, uh, mm -hmm. I tend to spend a few hundred dollars on food. So that's something to keep in mind. Like, um, it really does come down to what kind of food you want to eat. If you're going to live off of convenient food, like, you could easily get away with, like, as what Solid was saying, with, like, $30. But even if you don't live off of convenient food, you could, like, $30 is good enough to, like, last you, like, last you for a day. So, yeah, Hopefully that answers your question. And we do have another question on the chat, which Ooh. is what's our what's your favorite food in Japan? Um, mine is okonomiyaki. Um, That's being, good. That's a good choice. Being yeah. able to like sit down and watch it and actually try to cook it if they do let you try to cook it because like when I went when I went and actually had it. Um, obviously, we're tourists. We don't know how to do it. So the person, the I guess like the. I wouldn't say waiter, but like when the employees came came in and would like cook it for us. So yeah. Uh oh, I went to a place that uh had like a tablet that shows you how to cook it yourself. Hmm. So now I have a rough idea of how to do that. One day I will make okonomiyaki at home. But what my favorite like, food is, that's hard. Uh it's definitely gotta be something sweet it might be melon pan um oh my god melon pan's so good too agreed just maybe yeah but the ones that they sell over here don't compare to no over there. they don't they're just so yeah, light and fluffy yeah the texture there is a lot um is a lot like fluffier softer whereas here <laughs> And you know what we don't have enough of here? What? Melon soda. Just going to put that out there. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, we have another question. Um, last question unrelated to Japan. Do you guys prefer doing panels at night or during the day? Um, so, fun fact. Um, this is, 
I'm actually a first time panelist. <laughs> so um, as of right now, for me, for me personally, if it's um, like with everything going on right now, nighttime is ideal, but I guess like when co convention season starts up again, like I guess like maybe late afternoon, early night, um, Solid is a lot more is a lot more experienced than I am with panels and stuff. So yeah. Uh, I know I like to do panels. It depends on what the content of the panel is, whether I mm -hmm. want to do it at day during the day or at night. Um, still kind of weird for me to be doing panels online though. Uh, normally I do them in person. This is like my second virtual panel ever. Yeah. Like it's my, it's my first time doing a panel and it, both of them have been virtual. Me um, I do have two other panels in the works right now. So yeah. <laughs> I also have a few panels in the works right now. I just have to stop being lazy about writing them. <laughs> Same. All uh, right. All right. So. Hmm. Looks like that might be a wrap. Yeah. I have like two minutes left if anyone has any burning questions or comments they want to get in the very last second. We are here for you right now. Yeah. For the next two minutes at least. <laughs> Wow. Cool. All right. Thank you, everyone, right. for coming out. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully, oh. we found this. Oh, again, we have another question. When when is your next trip scheduled? Um, again, it um, again because of how how the world is right now with COVID, we can't really um, like I we won't be able to travel until like the restrictions are like gone. <laughs> So ideally it would be 2021. Yep, definitely 2021 if you know we're allowed to go places again. Hopefully. Uh, thanks everyone for coming. Uh, thanks mm -hmm. Tai Kai Khan for having us. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to reach out, feel free to hit us up on our social media, which we linked way earlier. If mm -hmm. you didn't get that down, let me see if I can get that for you right now. Uh, there we go. And uh, have a great evening if you're in Alaska. Have a great night if you are on the East Coast. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Bye. Enjoy the rest of your night.